Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're looking at Positron. Positron is a brand new beta IDE for R and also for Python. So it's produced by Posit, and they are the folks that have brought us R Studio and many different great Python and R packages in the past. And this is the next foray into building IDEs for you to work with both R and Python. As they mention here, really important to note that this is a beta version. There are bugs, it doesn't work perfectly just yet. So if you are new to R or Python and you're just starting to get accustomed to an IDE like R Studio, this might not be for you just yet. If you have come from a more coding background and you are used to VS Code, or if you are a more advanced user and you'd like R Studio to do a little bit more of the kind of thing that you would get from a more programming oriented IDE like VS Code, then this is something that I think you should really check out. All of the information about it is here on the GitHub page. I will link this up in the video description. And scrolling down, we can see they've got some videos giving a bit of an overview, how to get started, uh, the usual bits and pieces. If we go to the releases page and you want to download, it is available for Mac, Windows and Linux. And so whatever date when you log in is up the top here, click on the Assets tab and choose the appropriate EXE, DEB uh, and so on for your system. So I'm on a Windows machine. I have already installed the Windows version and had a bit of a play with it. Very straightforward little install wizard as you would expect. And this is what Positron currently looks like. So I've got some code in there. The layout is, I guess, vaguely similar to RStudio, few differences, and it's a little bit more general. So they've set it up because some people have been using R, some people have been using Python, and it definitely is more oriented to someone who is doing some heavy coding. So for instance, the code that I've got in here, which is from my recent getting started with R in an hour, is not particularly necessary to be able to debug and things like that. So we can see we still have our code here in a browser window and we can have multiple tabs for different data sets. We've still got our console down the bottom and you can see that we ship code down just the same. Got the run button there. On the right hand side, we've got our viewer and our help up the top, data and viewer down the bottom. This is all by default. I'm sure you could shuffle it around if you would like. Over on the left hand side here, we have these different areas. So we're currently in Explorer. We've got the folder where this particular code is. We've also got an outline. And so we can see with the outline, here are the different things that are happening in my code. And we've got a timeline, currently nothing happening there in the timeline. We've got search, we've got source control. Currently I haven't set this up, so we can see we can set up a repository. We've got run and debug. And so I'm not going to go through all of run and debug, but what I am going to do is link up to a good video that is debugging in R. The thing that threw me is when we hit this, we actually get an error saying to install an extension. And when we try and install an extension, we get another error. The debugging is not actually done with the debugging button. Presumably this is something they're going to fix in the future. The video, the person that made the video that I will share with you, they have already lodged ticket for this and I don't want to bother reinventing the wheel. They did a good job of kind of explaining through doing some debugging. So I will just link that up below, but we have debug. And certainly if you're doing more serious coding, the built-in debugging is going to be one of the things that really sets us apart. We've got extensions. There's a whole host of extensions. Currently we can see that I am in the debugging category, but if we take that filter off, currently the only extension I have installed is Quarto. And important to note, Quarto is an extension here. It's there, so I can still go new, create a new file, and I've got Quarto there because I've installed the extension. We can see that I can have R files, Python files, and Jupyter Notebooks all built in. Coming down the left, the last one, testing. So this is for Python tests, something I have not played with. If you are working in Python, I'm sure you will be able to find some good material on that. Down the bottom left, we have the little accounts button. And then we've got settings. I guess all important for some people. We can come into the color theme. 
you can change it over to dark mode if you would like and I actually find normally I'm quite happy with the white version but actually I kind of not only quite like the dark mode here but not a huge fan of their default light modern not sure why uh, we've also got the high contrast and low contrast as well again depends how you like the look of your ide as to which one of these you might choose not a whole lot else in there we have our settings just brings it up as a tab like this and we can see the different bits and pieces some of it's fairly basic stuff appearance and whatnot other than that, I think all pretty self-explanatory. That would certainly be enough to get you going. Up here, we can adjust what we are running. Currently R4.4. Control the folder that we are currently working in. So this is the beta of Positron. If you're used to IDEs like VS Code, and if debugging more complex programming rather than simple data analysis like what we've got here is your thing, then I think this is something to definitely check out. There's been a few times where I've had videos where that I've made about R Studio, and I've had people ask me if I could make a similar video about VS Code, and I think this fills in that gap. So those people that either currently use VS Code or that's what's more familiar to them, I think this will give the, the interface and some of the flexibility and functionality uh, that can make let you adjust some of what's going on as well as all the debugging features that I think will make this a really useful IDE. So that's it for today. I'll be back really soon with more videos about R, AI and random stuff.